Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another new episode of Quarkast. I am your host, Tim. And I'm Mikey. This is Sahil. Welcome, welcome everybody to a brand new exciting episode of Quarkast. Uh, before we get started, if you haven't already, do join our Discord channel. And if you're watching this on YouTube, which we do every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, do ask us questions during the episode so we can get to them during the episode. So without further ado, let's let's get started. I guess, Tim, I've been seeing uh, in like this Quanta magazine article and a few other places, this interesting phenomenon involving black holes, something to do with like a photon ring, which sounds like it's kind of a Lord of the Rings reference. Can you like, is it something I could wear on my finger or like what, <laughs> what, what is a, what is a photon ring like? And what does that have to do with black holes? Like, why is this important? Yeah, I think that I think there's a lot to unpack here, a lot of interesting things. Um, but before getting to the photon ring, and I guess if you do print it and make a like a 3D copy of it, may, maybe you could kind of kind of wear it. But it's even a controversy whether we actually seen it or not. So it's not sure yet. But before all that, we got to get into what are we talking about? I think we're talking about the picture shown right here. Like so, and basically, it's one of the very first picture of a black hole, right? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the very first picture of a black hole, and this is of uh, one of the galaxy. I think Messier eighty-seven. It's like a nearby galaxy, um, mm -hmm. and it's That's super the monster. Yeah, Dude. it it is ginormous. It's it's an enormous black hole, and I forgot what year it was. I think it's quite recent, a few years back. We the Horizon Telescope collaboration announced that they've actually captured this remarkable image. So the size of this black hole is about, I think like 200 times the size of the solar system, somewhere around that, you know, wow. and, and they measure that the mass of this, of this bad boy is, uh, or bad girl is, um, <laughs> six, around 6 billion solar mass, which is very large because typically a black hole, you, you can make a black hole out of like, like a sun, one sun. You know, why, why is this black hole six millions of them? We don't know, but it's massive, massive, massive. And it turns out that photon ring is just one possible property that this black hole could have, which we can get into later. But yeah, what we're talking about is this remarkable image, the very scientific first that we're able to capture of what a black hole looks like. Wait, I thought like you wouldn't be able to see like a black hole because everything that like falls into it just gets absorbed and like so there'd be nothing coming out of it. Like, Mikey, what what's going on with that? Oh no, black holes are very visible because because of the tidal forces, whatever gets sucked into it, you know, unless it's a direct shot into the center, most of the time it's gonna miss by some angle, right? Mm -hmm. And then by the time it by the time it gets close its velocity has increased so much, it's spinning around and swirling around. It's actually, um, I think I read this in Minute Physics, which was surprising to me. I didn't realize <laughs> that they were the most um, efficient energy generators because of how how efficiently they convert matter into energy just from the, the friction of the stuff swirling around it as it goes into it. Wow. So are you saying it's actually contrary to like very popular belief about black holes where they just keep sucking up everything and nothing ever gets out? That's actually really difficult to fall into a black hole. Well, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it could be considered difficult, but um, the, typically, the, unless you have a direct shot, the process of falling into a black hole can be, can be very violent. Um, so like if there's a black hole where nothing is falling into it, there's just like no matter around then it'll probably, you know, it, it, could, it could actually be black. But, mm -hmm. you know, the universe is full of dust, it's full of planetary, uh, you know, materials, and black holes eat things, and it takes a while for them to eat things sometimes, especially if they're, you know, falling in kind of like, you imagine like something spiraling into it slowly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that kind of process can create like a, a pretty significant glow for this black hole. Yeah. Gotcha. Is there any order of magnitude of time of how long that would take? Like, is it a minute? Is it like a year, hundreds of years, thousands, millions, billions? It takes a while. Like, it, I think it's just as the galaxy churns. I think it's like well, in eons almost. Like, th this takes a oh. while. Like, I mean, just, just look at how long it took for this bad boy to grow into like 6 billion mm. solar mass. Like, it's not clear how rapidly, like, how, how did they get to this size? It's not obvious. Like we actually don't really know how they got that large, but 
-hmm. But I yeah, it's a slow turn basically. Um, otherwise, I mean, if it was fast, all the galaxy would just turn into black holes. We won't have galaxies. But <laughs> with in a, in the center of every single galaxy, there is a mm -hmm. supermassive black hole, including our own galaxy. Yeah, yeah, I think the way to think about it is no matter no matter how how big a black hole is, no matter how aggressively it sucks in material, there's always going to be stragglers, and that mm -hmm. straggler those straggler materials are gonna are gonna accelerate, heat up, cause friction, and create a glow. I don't know exactly what the like the luminosity of that glow is as a function of time, but uh, I, I guess according to the pictures that yeah, we see, it's but be apparently quite these, these luminosities are immense, right? Like back in the days, like be, before we we have this photos. There's a lot of evidence that we already know that this supermassive black holes exist. These are like called quasars, whatever, because they just have beams of light coming in and that are, that are just like 200 times, you know, no, what you would normally ex expect from just galaxies. Like like some, some of these jets that come off from them are so bright. Some of these radio waves that come in and people call these like, like is it quasars, blazars, whatever. They're just these very- I'm, I'm so ignorant. Is it true Quas quasars are like, black holes whose uh, accretion disks are uh, active yeah yeah basically active galactic nuclei basically this is this is a quasar right it's just it just so much stuff is being flung in x-ray gamma rays you name it just blazing out and people initially you know look at that in the telescope like holy crap what the hell is that it's like it's like the lord of destruction coming coming on in the cosmos just like dude this is way more powerful than a galaxy. Something, something is, something was going on. It turns out it's like, hey, you know, it's it just a mass, super massive black hole acting up. You know, th these these guys are messy eaters. Uh -huh. Gotcha, gotcha. So I guess like, um, before we discuss about the photon ring, which was the initial spark of this conversation, can we describe like how this, like what is this picture that's behind you, Tim? Like, it looks like to me, like as if, like a metallic kind of like thing like some <laughs> art artists had like drawn this like this doesn't this looks like very uh surreal so wh what am i looking at like <laughs> clearly see the center is probably the black hole and then mm -hmm. like one side of it is brighter than the other and the other side is darker like what i thought shouldn't it be uniform like what what's going on with that wait first of all tim this is the genuine eph uh, image, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the the, the ETA edge in event event horizon telescope. This is the genuine image, mm -hmm. and the streak you see depicts information of the polarization of light, which is kind of like when you wear sunglasses, right? Like when you tilt, you see some darker, brighter. So, so the streak kind of encapsulates those information. And this image, in some sense, it is surreal because it's not like image image in a conventional sense. It's not like you you take a you you got you got your fancy little iPhone or camera and just cha-ching and there's the picture. Uh-uh. Like these are like, basically just imagine this. A galaxy in a telescope is just one dot, right? And a galaxy is massive. It's got like a trillion star. We're talking about something the size of a solar system in within this dot. And we're trying to capture that. Like it's, it's almost like finding a dot in a dot. So just taking picture like that, it's just not possible. So what is the solution? The solution is to build a camera basically the size of the Earth, pretty much. So, so people coordinate different telescopes at different points, different uh, places on Earth. They take a snapshot and they synchronize the time. Um, and so that they, what, they use what they call the phase information of the electromagnetic field, which is kind of like the, the, the ups and downs of the wave where they are, synchronize the time. And then using some in enormous computational power, they're able to kind of synthetically generate what the image, I guess, should have been, I guess it, it, it's the right word. So it's a very much AI generated kind of image. Not totally. I mean, I, I, I guess I, it could be <laughs> analogous. Like, okay, so, you know, as we know that the larger the, te the dish of the telescope you have, sort of the higher the resolution you can achieve, right? So as Tim mentioned, uh, these folks had this kind of idea, well, what if we take a bunch of different telescopes at opposite sides of the Earth and coordinate them so that they kind of act as a telescope that's literally the size of the diameter of the Earth? Um, what, you know, because it's, you're just coordinating different telescopes, it's not like a, you know, a, a unified structure. Uh, it requires a lot of like combining data from different sources and merging it. Um, and, with, and also what Tim mentioned about the phase, right? So a, the phase, of 
you know, uh, a signal is in some sense a lot easier. It's a lot more reliable than like the magnitude. So they isolate the phase of these signals and they use those to try to reconstruct like what is essentially a very blurry image, right? So if I have a very blurry image of Tim's face, like a, you know, eight pixel Mario Brothers type image, <laughs> um, I can combine that blurry image with what I know a face has to look like. I know a face has to have eyes, nose, mouth. And I sort of blend like a picture of a generic face with that low resolution image. And then that might give me a picture very close to what Tim actually looks like, right? Because I'm taking some data from Tim. I'm taking some data about what I know about how faces are supposed to look. And I'm kind of merging them together in a data-driven way. And that, that's essentially uh, what we have with the Event Horizon Telescope. I wouldn't say it's like, it's not quite a synthetic <laughs> image. It's like a data-driven um, reconstruction of what the black hole yeah. looks like. So are you saying like, it's not only a combination of the data that's taken image data, but it's also like based on maybe simulations of what we think it looks like and then combining those together? Yeah, simulations and constraints mm -hmm. um, for what we, yeah, uh, those things go uh, all into some big sausage that I don't understand and <laughs> my only people in the collaboration understand. But, yeah, I guess uh, there, there's some theorist ignorance. Like we are not, we're completely not expert whatsoever in the signal mm -hmm. processing and all that <laughs> jazz. I mean, this is not to diminish their achievement. This is a monumental achievement in terms of computational physics, basically, and also experimental physics. Um, to, to actually have this picture. I mean, it's, it's mind boggling that they can do this, right? Wow. So I guess like that comes to the question, like now that you have this picture, like we've reconstructed Tim's face, like, what do we do with Tim's face is like, is the next question. <laughs> like, well, it's, so it's, 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 not, it's almost not like we've reconstructed Tim's face, but like we found, <laughs> we've found substantial evidence for the fact that Tim does indeed have a nose, <laughs> does indeed have hair, it's not shaved. We know it's black-ish, and we can get kind of like a you know, like a rough, blurry picture of what he looks like. So then, what's the more we... exciting part? The fact that we the fact that we're confirming that certain properties of black holes that were uh, you know heretofore like unobserved, the fact that we can confirm that they exist in a visual medium, I think is the, one of the biggest uh, yeah. yeah achievements here. Wow. Yeah, I, I guess like, so if, if we were able to um, say with more, relatively more certainty that these different properties exist, I guess, can we like delve into the picture and say like, look at different features of it and say like, what does that mean? So for instance, the bright part in what I mm -hmm. assume is like the front, like what, what is that? Like why, yeah, yeah just, just why, so, why so, is that bright? Than that? Yeah, so the color differential, I think, I think uh, encode some data information about the black hole. One thing that they found is that this black hole is rotating, so it's not completely symmetric. And that's what we mm. generic, generic, generically expect, because, you know, as, as you can see, galaxy rotate, and as you suck into matter, there always tend to be some net rotation that the black hole will eat up. And when that happens, that black hole is what we call, um, I guess, like a curved black hole. It's a rotating black hole. And, and the prediction from Einstein's theory of relativity of curved black hole kind of is baked into some of these features of these like rotating kind of like swirly type of feature. And that's also observed in the data. In fact, there has been some measurement that's, that, kind of, that kind of measure how fast this black hole is rotating. And roughly speaking, I mean, because black hole doesn't really have structure. You can't really say how fast it's rotating. It's just there's some rotation parameter. Right, and they measure that it's 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 rotating almost as fast as possible. Like the amount of energy in rotation is pretty comparable to the energy in mass of the black hole itself. So this is kind of insane, right? Wow. Oh. So is there like a sense of like, I guess like if it if it were Earth, like how is there a sense like in how fast Earth would be rotating if we were to like analogize it? Uh, that's difficult because it depends it's on. It's hard because if Earth were if Earth were rotating <laughs> fast, it's it's um actually yeah yeah it's kind of a good analogy. If the Earth were rotating like fast enough, right, all of the dirt would eventually just start to fly off of it, right? Yeah. And you wouldn't have an Earth anymore. And and the kind of the similar thing can happen with a black hole. 
although we don't actually think it's possible for the black hole to shed material like this. Yeah. But there, there's kind of a bound at which you would expect that it would. And that's kind of the theoretical upper limit for how fast the black hole is allowed to rotate because we don't believe that a black hole can actually shed uh, information or shed its material by rotating yeah, fast enough. But, so this is, yeah. Yeah, rotating is just, yeah, it just isn't, unfortunately, just not the right language, right? It's like when we have, when we say rotating, it's like there's something that's rotating. For black holes, it's just like, I don't know, space is rotating, I guess. <laughs> so. <laughs> So it's not like yeah. there's something there that's rotating. It's just space. No, but, it is the space. The space is there and it's rotating. There is, yeah. I guess there there this part called the the, the aerosphere where it's before the event horizon that when you fall into the black hole, you're forced to rotate with it. Even though if you start off stationary, you're just like, oh, whoops, I'm spinning around now. And if you watch very carefully in Interstellar movie, you will actually notice that they actually uh, depicted the aerosphere. I think rotating, but we don't have a video here. But maybe one day. Yeah. We'll check it out so i guess like taking a small step back from because you mentioned ergosphere event horizon i just want to like clarify those terms so you have mm -hmm. a black hole there's like this um i don't want to say like amorphous boundary but like this boundary that's like not like not like a hard boundary not like a boundary you can stand on that's this event horizon that if you go past it you can't escape outside the black hole or at least that's what general relativity says and then you have this ergosphere like what's and, like, an ergosphere I don't know. I've never heard oh, that term before. Oh, <laughs> it, it, it's a uh, it, it's a it's specific to rotating black holes. So that's why when you look about, talk about event horizon, these are like the most vanilla type of black holes that are just a black hole. Like there's not not much else to it. Just a black hole. Things yeah. fall in, they can never come out. But when black holes start to rotate, there there there's some more uh, nuanced and complex structures, and one of that structure is the ergosphere where kind of the, the space time itself rotates with it you know because the black hole is rotating kind of rotates with the black hole and that's before yeah. the event horizon so like before you fall into your doom you kind of feel that effect you know you get you get a little bit of warning actually i'm not like a twisting tidal force kind of something like that yeah and i didn't interstellar yeah, I remember, it, it's yeah. a scene that's really cool that you can kind of see it's just like it's so kind of rotating around but isn't there another term for that like like uh in classical general activity people study this like the frame Frame dragging, dragging, whatever. Frame dragging. There, there, is that there's frame a few dragging? words the same for thing? it. Yeah, I, I think is so. Ergosphere yeah. frame dragging. Yeah, I think so. It's just for you're okay, forced okay. to drag with it. You you have no okay. choice. Like okay. Doing I just never I never heard it called the ergosphere before. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's you know terminology. Yeah. Frame so dragging. just to summarize, if I am between this like this sort of uh, ergosphere boundary or like in between the ergosphere, the the point at which the kind of sphere. Um, and then also between that and the event horizon, I'm forced to rotate with the black hole. Even if I like am in a rocket and I like blast off in the other direction, I will rotate. Yep, you are forced to rotate because space itself is rotating. Like, sorry. Not only will you be rotated, but you'll be like sheared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. You'll be like. Uh, it wouldn't twisted. be that pleasant, you know. Yeah. Like, okay, okay. It's, Tim, I challenge you, like, what if I build, like, the best rocket ever, and I'm, like, in the middle, and I'm just, like, full blast, like, go. Nope. This, like, this, like, Millennium yeah. Falcon, like, nope. light speed. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, Sorry. The, 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 the spaceship matters less, but I think the nature of the black hole matters more. Like, if it's not rotating as fast, then, then yeah, the frame dragging it, effects are lower. And... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, the, the effects will be lower, but, but just like the, the event horizon, the event horizon is a place where you cannot escape. Right, you go in, you're done. You just go in straight to the singularity. Just like that, the the ergosphere is a place where it doesn't matter how hard you try, you're rotating with it. <laughs> it's just like you got you gotta go like beyond the speed of light, you know, to counter that. So it's like nope. <laughs> but but at least you can escape, you know, like you're not totally doomed just quite yet. I see. I see. So what is the significance of this like boundary between between the event horizon and the ergosphere is like like what what does it mean for things to rotate in that like are things like doomed to also like fall in if they just go at their you know at their normal trajectories are there things that are like can be sh you know sh uh, shot out and are things that just rotate like in infinitely or like if the black hole were just like the way it was like forever it would just keep rotating forever like what's the significance I, of this i guess that's kind of one of the questions right um i mean you 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 can look at all these trajectories 
and it, it can get very complicated. There could be things that go in, rotate, spin out, spin around, all kinds of complications. And you know, you can, you can look at the math, like you know, because according to Einstein's theory, even light will get bent. So light mm -hmm. can also spin around and, and do all kinds of funny things. And you, you can look at the math and there are all these funny trajectory. And to some extent, in terms of significance, you know, it at least it used to be that you, you can argue both ways, right? Like the math is interesting, you can study it. But other than that, it's just kind of a matter of fact. It's kind of like, hey, you can, you can send a particle in, it will just move that way. Beyond that, at least, I think historically, that doesn't seem to be that much of a significance. It's just like, oh, okay, it, it would, you just get these funny movements. I guess if you make another interstellar movie, you can make some really fancy move, you know, <laughs> movements around the black hole. But beyond that, um, at least as far as I know, that there, there wasn't people didn't feel like there was that much significance. But until like recently, and and I guess now this is coming back for the photon ring story now. Some of these these some of these trajectories might actually have something more interesting to say about the structure of black holes. I think if we were talking about the photon ring, though, I, 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 don't you think it's better to like kind of cast aside those complications and just think about, just think about a black hole that's not spinning, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we know well. We know that a black hole, just a vanilla non-spinning black hole, has this property where if light crosses the event horizon boundary, it's going in. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, it's not going in. It's going out. And so the photon ring is like, what about? the line exactly between these two points. What if what if I shoot a beam of light like exactly tangent to the event horizon, right? Then it's not going to go in. It's not going to go out. It's just going to go in this orbit. Perfect orbit around it, right? And then if I think about variations of that, let's say it's just slightly outside the tangent of the event horizon. Then it might spin around five times and then get ejected. And if it's a little farther out, it might, if it's a little closer, it might spin around like a hundred times and then get ejected. If it's even closer, it might spin around like a million times before it gets ejected. And so people were looking, uh, you know, famously Andy Strominger from Harvard was just looking at these pictures of these event horizon telescope images. And he was just realizing that like literally the light that's hitting us, some of it's orbited the black hole five times, some of it's orbited the black hole billions of times and then and then made its way to us. So and and everything in between, right? So in a sense like that kind of captures like a huge range of time, right? You're seeing light that's orbited around it once, twice, five hundred times, a thousand times, a million times, and it's all hitting you at the same time. So you in one fell swoop you're kind of getting an image of like the entire history of the universe, <laughs> or at least, at least as long as that black hole has been in existence, right? Huh. So are you giving the analogy of kind of like tree rings, but for black holes sort of a thing? Kind of, because it's, 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 uh, it's not an evidence of how long the black hole has been in existence, like the tree rings. Oh, OK. But it just means that the black hole is sending you signals that are one year old, two years old, three years old, four years old, thousand years old, a million years old. It's sending you signals from all these different moments in time, depending on how long they were trapped in the orbit of the black hole before they came into your eyes. Um, mm. And that's kind of crazy, right? It's like a, it's like an entire history of it's the a universe. Time capsule, just one. kind of. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess then one one it begs the question, like looking at Tim's background, like how do I know which like photons are from like 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 you know way back and like versus a year ago or something yeah so 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 i guess people have tried to do some analysis to actually uh tease out this so-called the photon ring and it, the, the the structure is also predicted uh is, is actually just straight up predicted by einstein's theory of relativity and it's going to be a little bit it's actually quite a bit large in the event horizon but like you know uh, i don't know 20 30 percent there's some number Precise number. Mm -hmm. So basically, to, to do that, people try to subtract off what what the hazy stuff around the black hole might be to see if there's like a ring of brightness. I guess the ring of power, kind of to see to see if it exists. There was some controversy from the experimental colleagues. Some people claim that, hey, there's some signal of it. 
Some people claim that, nope, there's no signal. This is just all a statistical fluke. Um, so we don't know quite yet. But then, you know, my bet would be that probably it's there. You know, it's, it's mixed in the image. But then we can't quite distinguish it quite yet, at, le at least experimentally. I see. I see. I guess, like, so, it, like, I'm, I, when I was learning about black holes, I learned that event horizons have, like, the most significance. Like, does this have as much significance as event horizon? Or, like, is it something like, what, what can you use this for? It could. It could. I mean, one of the biggest significant aspects of the event horizon, you know, comes from this idea of holography, right? Uh, which we talked about a few times before. But it's, it's the idea that whatever's going on in the interior of the black hole is actually translated into some different language that you can read off of the surface of the black hole, the event horizon. Uh, and in these studies, um, uh, you know, physicists like Leonard Susskind has shown that the event horizon actually has a little bit more structure than we thought of in order to accommodate the fact that the surface is describing everything that's going on inside, you have to kind of give the surface, the event horizon, a little bit more meat. And uh, this is generally referred to as the stretched horizon. It's like a tiny infinitesimal region outside the event horizon that is actually like carrying a lot of the information about what's going on inside. And as Tim mentioned, this photon ring exists a little bit outside of that, but it's still connected to the dynamics. I mean, I don't know this for sure, but I'm metaphysically certain that the photon ring dynamics are you know, somewhat connected to the dynamics of the stretched horizon. And so people started thinking that could the photon ring actually carry some of that information of the hologram, of the projection of what's really inside. Yeah. And I think that's why this has gained so much excitement. Just the, the slightest yeah. possibility that that could be true would be amazing. Wait, so would this tell us, like, what's potentially, like, theoretically tell us what's going on inside of a black hole? Like, if I'm taking what you're saying, or, like... The idea that this could be a window to what's going on in the black hole, I think, is what's driving the excitement around this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of these theoretical development, you know, this holographic pr conjecture that the surface of the black hole is kind of like a hologram. Traditionally, all the attention has been paid around the event horizon. But you know the problem about the event horizon is because we can't see it as dark, right? Even in this picture, there's darkness, darkness in that circle, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's exciting because the photon ring is actually quite a bit outside the event horizon, right? It's not literally on top of the event horizon. It, it, it's by uh, quite a bit, just a bit larger, maybe 20, 30 percent. And then also the physical picture is very tantalizing. It's almost like 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 a hologram in real life. Like just just think about what Mikey was describing. Imagine imagine some light particle from eons in the past coming in, hit the black hole, spin around many many bazillion times. Like as it spins around, all that information is kind of like you you're kind of like creating a hologram right there. And after some eons later, it the 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 photon will leave, and that's kind of like literally you're projecting out that information from the holo from like this photon ring, right? So this very physical, you know, kind of like a realist view of what that hologram looks like. And then Andrew Strominger did some, and, and team and collaborators at Harvard, they did some calculation and show that indeed, like the physics between, the physics of the ring, of the photon ring, kind of does act like a hologram to the photon that gets shoot out way in the future. So in a very real sense, he kind of discovered like a little hologram, or at hmm. least it has the properties that you would expect of a hologram. Right? Maybe not. Maybe that that's too strong of a word. Yeah, not literally a hologram, but very tantalizing hint. It looks it like is, a hologram. It looks like a hologram. So, uh, so I, I want to I want to take a little step back. We've been mentioning the word hologram, and we have described it in previous episodes. But is there like not exactly the, like the strict technical definition, but is there kind of a classical analogy we can give about like what a hologram actually means in this context? Like, this is a black hole, like, what does it have to do with holograms? I think of Star Wars, yeah. like, Obi-Wan Kenobi helped me kind of a thing. What, what is, uh, yeah, what, how can I think about that? I, I think it's a projection. I think it, it's like a projection for a lower dimensional structure into higher dimension. Like, like, like imagine, I don't know, 
like, isn't there? Wait, like... wait, I, I, I got, it, I got it. Okay. Suppose you're inside <laughs> of the black hole, right? Suppose you're inside of the black hole. You live in a three-dimensional space. Yeah. But you know that there's this wall around you. So if you're gonna communicate to anyone on the outside, you have to use shadow puppets, basically, yeah. right? You have to give like a degraded version of it. The holographic principle is saying there's a way to make shadow puppets mm -hmm. completely describe exactly yeah. everything you're trying to say. Uh, um, and the photon ring is intriguing because if you were inside of a black hole, and if you were trying to send a signal out to somebody mm -hmm. by through some either making shadow puppets on the surface, which would be holography, then the photon ring could be the thing that carries that shadow puppet information out into the universe. Interesting. Um, my other question is like also that we're not getting all the photons from this photon ring. So we would be getting like, I would consider it partial information. So how would you be able to like know what's going on? Like you'd have to capture like all the photons around to know. No, like, no, no, no. You would just oh. have to encode redundancies. Oh. What, what does that mean? What does what this mean? see? What? Like, you're not going to capture all the photons, but if you encode it redundantly, you only need to capture, like, 30% of them to get the whole picture. But how do you how do you know that? Like, how do you know, thir where did that 30% come from? <laughs> I mean, I, there, there, it did come from somewhere. I don't, I don't think we should get into that now, but, like, it, it, tur it turns out that, like, if you, if you look at the interior of a black hole, some of these models, they do involve making redundant cup. Like, if you're inside of a black hole and you want to send a signal out, uh, a lot of these processes seem to resemble making copies of that signal mm. so that when they get out, not all of them have to reach the outside observer in order to make the point. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh... I guess in any way, like this is this is not what you think conventionally of getting information out. It's not like, hey, something fly, fly out of the black hole. Like, there's none of that, right? It's like really convoluted way of like it, it's playing like Sherlock Holmes on like these little bits of light and practically it's probably never gonna happen like not within human lifetime or any alien lifetime like it's just yeah just <laughs> no way probably right but like theoretically a theorist can dream like imagine you know in the dream in the dreamland in the mathematical land you know that that might be plausible the pinnacle of human evolution should should be able to <laughs> something like that given enough time. You're optimistic. <laughs> if, we, if, we, if our species survives a trillion years, wow. I, think, I, I, think, I, think, I think we should uh, <laughs> make it happen. So, so I guess like this is, so uh, there's a lot of theoretical excitement, but Tim, what you're saying is pragmatically speaking, uh, you wouldn't bet any money on it. <laughs> That we're gonna be able to. I mean, not in our lifetime. Not in our lifetime, but but it's a theoretical, it's a theoretical ring of power. I think that's <laughs> that's what it is. But I mean, if if a mechanism exists for this to happen, surely someone was designed to exploit. Some surely somebody was meant to exploit it at some point, whether it be a million years in the future or a thousand years in the future. Um, seems, seems like you're hinting at something, Mike. Well. <laughs> Seems like you're hinting at something. <laughs> I mean, God doesn't make like I mean, you know, God, uh, you know, lowercase g, God doesn't make amazing phenomena that you could take advantage of if it wasn't intended to be taken advantage of, right? Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I guess you could imagine a universe, or maybe our universe in the future, maybe, you know, all that we see will just be black holes, and then these black and everything that exists will ultimately decay to photons and eventually all that will be will just be photons going in coming into the photon ring and then scattering out and you know the universe will just be a bunch of these holograms projecting out ever and forever so in that way maybe i don't know it's hard to think about that. Reality will be really Or weird. we could discover that our universe is actually inside of a black hole, which, which is actually totally legitimately possible. And maybe the only way for us to communicate with our creators is by, uh, you know, <laughs> create, creating some kind of signal that goes out and gets trapped in a photon ring outside the universe and gets projected out. <laughs> well, let's not go that far then, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fantasy. 
All right, fair, fair enough. So we're we're basically almost at time. Um, is there anything you guys want to say as like concluding remarks, like significance, reeling this back to humanity, um, et cetera, et cetera? Tim, Tim, you go first. Yeah, I think, I think for me, this is just a really exciting development to see that. Like, I, I, I think, I think the picture of a black hole kind of invokes kind of an emotional response. Like maybe theoretically, people, people always thought that like, oh, whatever, we've always known that black hole probably exists. But like the, the fact that we can pin down a picture and maybe see some of these structures for real, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't, yeah, I don't know how to put it. it it's, 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 what a great time to, to be alive, to, to witness these uh, scientific achievements. And, and I really look forward to see what, what the theorists come up with to, to find something interesting about that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, like, I certainly believe that the best is yet to come. I mean, if, I mean, we haven't talked about this, um, in previous podcasts, you know, cause we, we, it'll take some due diligence, but there's been a lot of really interesting work. Like, you know, for the longest time, the mystery has been what's been inside of a black, what's inside of a black hole. How do you describe the inside of a black hole? And people like Netta Engelhart and Dan Harlow are making like very convincing arguments for what that could look like. And then it's just amazing that this kind of experimental result, actually taking a picture of a black hole has inspired people to look at like other um, artifacts of the black hole and how they could be connected to this whole picture that will eventually tell us how to describe the interior of a black hole in a, in a kind of a robust way. And we're not there yet, but I think this is like, I don't know, it, it just it just gets the um, physicist juices flowing, just yeah. thinking about how to combine like these things and get a bigger I, picture. I guess the punchline is that we should think beyond the horizon. This is yeah. literally. And then Tim, my, my last question for you is like, will this photon ring be available anytime soon as like a jewelry item that I could wear? <laughs> bling bling <laughs> it, it, it's a theoretical jewelry item we can all have a full time ring you just have to have the power of the imagination no, you, you just have to turn your finger into a black hole <laughs> it's like right there full time ring fair enough fair enough all right then well on that note i want to thank everybody for joining us and we'll see you all next week see you all bye bye bye, bye.